everyone, and welcome to Bassman Studio. Today's lesson will be a portrait lesson, and for fun, I've chosen to do a painting of actor Sir Patrick Stewart, whom you may all know from Star Trek and from the X-Men. So it was a lot of fun to paint. I'm sure you'll enjoy watching this video and learn a lot. So sit back and relax, and let's begin this new lesson from Bassman Studio. Here's our reference. It's a nice picture of uh, Patrick Stewart with nice shadows. And um, here's my palette. So you see I have all the colors arranged from light to dark and plenty of mixing space. You always want to make sure you have plenty of mixing space on your palette. And as usual, we start with a drawing in Burnt Sienna. So very simple, very simple drawing, no detail of course. And we're just laying in the basic shadows on the painting. So we know that the light is coming from the upper right of the picture. So the shadows are going to be on the left side of the picture. So you just want to put in the major shadows, just the big shadows. Don't worry about any of the small shadows yet. And you just want to go all around, like the clothes, anywhere where you see big shadows. Keep it open and free. Don't worry about any detail yet. And it takes a little practice to know when to stop putting shadows, but with practice you'll know. And just want to go all around. You could even smooth out the shadows a little bit. Make sure that you put every major shadow in there. And it should start to turn right now. You should start to see volume right now in your painting, even at this early stage. I consider this like the what we call the underdrawing. And I'm just going around kind of nitpicking the shadows a little bit and softening it up. And this is going to be our base for our color. So you just want it to turn as much as you can. And now I'm going to mix the color for the background. And because the background is a gray color, a very dark gray, I'm using black and white and a little bit of blue because black and white really are in colors in the spectrum. So you always want to add one of the primary colors, in this case blue, because we want it to be pushed back. And very, very loosely, you just, what we call, you just block in the background, right? And that's going to push your figure forward. So it's going to have the effect that it's pushing anything forward, even at this early stage. So just go all around, keep it very simple. Even if your background is complicated, just treat it like a very basic flat color. And just make sure you cover everything. And now we're going to mix the flesh tone. So for this, I'm using a little bit of white, tiny bit of yellow, and some red. So we get like a nice flesh color. And again, you just want to very simply lay in the flesh color, like go all around. And kind of like using clay and you're just molding the clay until you get the right shape. It's the same principle in painting as well. And you just want to keep use a big brush and just block everything in. And the paint is still wet, so you could just mush the painting around. And here I'm adding what we call the uh, sort of the shadows, just a little bit of the shadows. Not the major shadows, but what we call the half tone. So it's going to start to turn now a little bit.
And again, just go all around. Remember, you don't want to just focus on one area. And now we can start adding the very dark shadows. So I chose a very uh, a rich red and a black, and perhaps a little bit of yellow as well, just to create a very rich, dark color, because we want this head to really almost like three dimension, have a three-dimensional quality in the picture. That's our goal, so the best way to do that is to have very high contrast in, in tone and value. And again, you just want to keep everything simple and just want to move around the painting. And you can see it's start, starting to look like a face. At this early stage, it should start to look like a face at this point. So don't wait till detail for it to start to work. It always should start to work in the beginning. And now I'm just going and painting the clothes. Again, very simply and very, very broadly. So this is the second stage of the painting. And after I've blocked it in and laid in all the color, etc., this is where we start polishing it up a bit, adding detail at the very end. So it's very exciting. Um, one of my favorite parts of painting. So um, I also wanted to show you guys the palette I'm using. So you can see it's fairly large, uh, very light also. Great for painting outside. I've taken it outside painting and it's just amazing. But you see how much mixing space I have and that I've put all the colors toward the uh, edge. That way I have all the space to mix paint and to um, mix color for the painting. So if you guys could get a palette like this, um, it's just, I, I highly recommend it, either glass or wood. So I just wanted to show you that before we continue with the second stage of painting. So let's continue this painting of Patrick Stewart. So now we're just going to polish up a little bit, the head a little bit, give it more of a shape. Remember, since the painting is still wet, you could kind of mush the painting, the color around a little bit to kind of form it. Again, if you think of clay, like molding clay. Till you get the shape you want. And these are light touches I'm doing, just to give it kind of a form and blend everything. And just smoothing it out a little bit to give it a little bit more form. Remember, go all around, right? So I'm not focusing on one area. I'm going all over the face, cheekbones, and even the shadows. And we're just blending a little bit, just to kind of give it, softening it up a little bit. And now we could work on the background as well. And go back and polish it up a little bit and smooth it out. And the background helps pull the figure forward. So it's not just the main figure that's your prerogative, you have to think of the background. The background, every, everything in a painting has to work, background and figure. The background actually helps pull the figure forward. So it's a very important element in painting. And just change, you could even change, like I'm changing some of the flesh tone a little bit. So of course you can do that if you think something should be darker or lighter. It's always good to correct something if you if it needs to be corrected. And this solidifies the painting. So now I'm just I'm just covering up as much area as I can, any of the canvas that's showing before I add detail. So this consider this like pretty much this last stage before you add detail. 
You just want to go around and just really make sure everything is correct. And, and now we're just going to add one of my favorite parts is the uh, highlights. And you can see I'm using really thick paint just so it could stand out. This is where the painting really starts to get a three-dimensional quality. And I'm mixing white with a little bit of yellow. And just keep it really thick and, and just very beautiful and very opaque. And you can see there's a highlight right on the top right of, of the head. So we're just going to put that in there very thick. And that's going to give our painting um, a real three-dimensional effect. And you could even smooth it out a little bit while the paint is wet. And you can see how it helps. Sometimes a highlight is subtle. Sometimes it's, it's very, very bright. And on the cheekbone as well, you see it's a beautiful, thick, opaque um, paint that I'm putting there just to give it like a, as if the cheekbones are really standing out. And again, you can keep smoothing it out until you get it right. You blend it in. But try to keep it opaque at this point because we want the highlights to really stand out. And now you can just start blending a little bit. And just polishing up before we actually add any of the very fine details. And Working, just working on the shadows. And you can see I'm darkening the shadows a little bit. Just again, to give it more volume. And it's really helping pull, push the figure back, push the shadow part of the figure back. It's almost as dark as the background. And you can see how that really helps. And these, these are all done very gently. It's not, it's little by little. So patience is, is very important when you're painting. Just don't rush anything. So I'm just going to take a smaller brush now, just, and this is where we're going to start adding detail. Very carefully, we're just going to start drawing in the eyes. And this is where you need a very steady hand and a very fine pointy brush. And just take your time. It takes a little practice, a little patience. But get yourself some really fine sharp brushes. And um, a mall stick, as I mentioned once in my in previous lessons, is very good for steadying the hand. And we're just going to work on the other eye as well, the eyelid, very carefully. It's almost like you're redrawing. You almost want to hold your breath when you're doing this, just to keep your brush steady. And now the actual eyeball. So again, very carefully. Take your time. And, yeah, we just want it to look round and in its socket. So it's very important that you get this right. And remember, in portraiture, there's always a dominating eye. One eye is always 
much more prominent than the other eye. So we're just going to use another brush. And now we're going to add the bottom part of the eye. Very carefully. And this is where you could start adding detail. You could use the same brush to add detail in your entire painting. So we're just going to start working on small, very small things right now. Just the pupil. And you can see it's starting to kind of look like a pupil, like starting to kind of turn and have some sort of depth. So now we're going to add finer detail on the eye. This is really, 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 as you can see, this brush is extremely fine and very sharp, specifically for these details. All this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, and now for the highlight on the eye, just to give it a wetness. Again, using the same really fine brush. And we could do the same for the other eye. Again, not as prominent as this. one eye is always more prominent than the other eye. And now we could start adding the very small details, such as the eyebrows. And just be careful, just look at which eyebrow is more prominent. Again, the, the, there are always more prominent features in the face. And the other eyebrow. So little by little, it starts to look like a face. The important thing is to just be patient. And again, with the same brush, we're adding the upper lip. And of course we need that part, right? So again, just steady your hand. Don't rush. Make sure that you're in a calm state of mind, of course. It's almost kind of meditative to do this. So, and now just the smaller details, any, any wrinkles or anything under bags under the eyes, etc., can be done with, with um, a little bit of color, almost like what we call a dry brush technique. You're just dragging the paint along the surface. And I can even blend. As you can see, I'm blending a little bit. So I, I this is one of my favorite parts because once you know everything works, this is just the finer, small things, just to give it a magical quality. And just the other eye as well. Hey everyone, I just wanted to talk about my latest illustrated book called Cosmic Paintbrush. It's a book that has uh, illustrations uh, done from original paintings by me. I also wrote the book. It's a very easy read and it's very positive, full of positive energy and full of very colorful illustrations, as you can see. So a lot of the illustrations are double page spreads. So you have these like very colorful 
large illustrations in it. And it's a great easy read. So if you're interested, you could buy it either on amazon.com or on lulu.com. Links are in the description in this video. So buy your copy today. And one last double page spread, as you can see that one. So again, these are all from original paintings by me. So take a look and uh, buy yours today. So now back to our video, which is about painting a portrait. So now we're mixing a little bit more paint here on my palette. And this is more for the highlights. Now the highlights on the nose, a loaded brush full of beautiful thick paint. And this is to give the nose a three dimensional quality and make it stand out. And you can see how thick the paint is. And since noses like stick out basically, I mean, they get a very nice, beautiful highlights. And now the wrinkles on the head, which um, are also very nice to paint. So we go back to our small thin brush. And because the paint is still wet, it's almost blending. It's, it's blending with the color underneath it. So it's blending very nicely. And you don't want to make it too dark, of course, just these are small details. And one of the last things is to go around and clean it up a little bit. So I'm doing that with the background, just making sure everything is where it should be. And just adding the last few details, anything I might have missed. And with my uh, very soft brush, I'm just blending in anything that needs to be blended in very gently. This is a very fine, soft brush, just to, just to what I use to blend everything. And here's our finished painting of Sir Patrick Stewart, completed. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that lesson from Bassman Studio. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding materials or techniques. Also, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, Bassman Studio, and stay tuned for new videos which are coming soon. If any of you would like to see a certain aspect for me to cover that I haven't covered yet, uh, or to go over something again that I've, co I've already covered, please let me know. And um, remember, just keep painting and drawing. Don't let fear stop you from being creative. Go out there, produce great art, and be expressive. Don't let anything stop you. So I'll see you all very soon. Enjoy the amazing spring weather. Take care, everyone.